Hello there. Welcome to my workshop. This is the welding station. This is a 10 millimeter wrench. This is another 10 millimeter wrench. This is the rotational axis for my DIY CNC milling machine. And this is where I keep various lengths of wire. What's that? Oh, you want to talk about this? Okay. Well, here's how I made it. This milling machine I converted to CNC a few years ago. It's not the fastest, biggest, or prettiest, but it does work really well for my needs. Ever since I got the machine, I've had this fixture. It's imported, it uses 5C collets, they're pretty inexpensive and super handy. It's great for holding round parts on the machine, and you can index them up to 360 degrees for positional work. And you know, to be perfectly honest, that's really just fine for most work you'd do on a small milling machine like this. But, you know, I have a hard time leaving well enough alone, so I got this little guy. Yep, that's the headstock to a mini lathe. I've got this cockamamie idea that I can automate it and turn it into a fourth axis. And you can actually get this assembly uh, complete from Little Machine Shop, it's not very expensive. And it's really handy for something like this in my opinion, because it's a lathe headstock. It's designed to have minimal run out, it's designed to be able to take the side cutting loads of machining. It's got a nice spindle bore. It's even got a spindle taper, uh, Morse taper number three, so you can use something like this collet. I also love the fact that I can use all my mini lathe chucks without having to adapt them. That's very handy for me. I'm using a NEMA 23 stepper motor, as well as a timing belt with the appropriate pulleys for driving this axis. This setup will give me a little bit more versatility for some other ideas I have in the future. We'll have to machine that pulley to fit, as well as machine a couple of these plates I designed in Fusion 360 to mount everything up. Before we do that, though, we're going to have to pull the guts out of this headstock. <laughs> Look at that, they didn't even drill all four holes. Since I was tearing the headstock all the way down anyway, I figured I'd upgrade the bearings. These are way more common than they used to be. You can get them all over for various prices. If you're curious about the bearing upgrade, well, <laughs> plenty of videos, but you can see how I do it here in my shop now real quick. I really didn't like that red paint, so I stripped the casting down bare. I sealed off all the important parts and just gave it a coat of appliance enamel. I had gray, so I used gray. I tried freezing the spindle to see if it would help the bearing go on any easier. I don't know if it made a difference. With the bearings upgraded, I could reassemble the headstock and start moving towards making the parts to turn it into a fourth axis. Now, if you've got a sharp eye, you'll see that little dust cover, the round thing on the bench. That should have gone onto the spindle before I installed the bearings. Whoops. Oh well. Okay, first things first, let's bore out this timing pulley. It needs to fit around the spindle, and they don't sell one with a hole in it that big. I had to shorten up the spacer to make some room for the new timing pulley. Now it's time to machine a couple of plates. One's to hold the motor to the axis, and the other's to hold the axis to the bed of the mill table. That's the one you see me working on here. This is a trick that I've used a few times in the past with super glue and powder coat masking tape. It gives me access to all four sides of the workpiece, as well as the top, in one single setup. Now, this is about 10 minutes of preparing it to get it stuck down to my sacrificial pallet there. 
but once it's stuck, it's actually a pretty decent way of work holding. I just try not to rely on it too awful much. So here's a little lesson I wanted to be sure to show. I had to stop the code right here. It's unrelated, something had come loose on the machine and I needed to tighten it back down. So when I tried to restart the code right from where I'd stopped it, well it didn't start the spindle or the coolant or anything like that. I tried to restart the spindle by the time I caught that, but it was too late. Not that big of a deal, but in Mach 3 I thought I'd restart the entire drill routine. I backed up the code to the start of, well, that section, and then I hit the run from here button. Now the problem is, run from here will actually back the code up one line and start it from that position, thinking it had a previous tool that was shorter in a different spot. Me being very smart, it took me two tries to realize that is exactly what's happening. Anyway, so set next line is the button I should have pressed. I discovered this after kind of giving up on the drill and just skipping ahead to the 2D contour with my quarter inch end mill. This is just cutting the outside of the part. I chose this instead of an adaptive because I wanted to keep it tight to the workpiece. I didn't have that much y-axis movement left. This backplate for holding the stepper motor in place has a couple of large holes in it, and I could have just gone throughout with an adaptive routine and turned them all into chips, but that didn't feel very efficient. I just used a 2D contour path and just cut them out so I'd have the chunks left over. It saves on spindle time, tool life, and, well, materials. You can't do this if it's held in a vise because those chunks on the inside would become projectiles once they're free. But since everything's stuck down to the plate, it's easy peasy. These slots are basically big enough to allow a 4mm nut to slide back and forth without rotating. This is part of my bright idea for how I'm going to tighten the timing belt that goes between the stepper motor and the spindle pulleys. This definitely gave me the heebie-jeebies because I have a history of breaking 8th inch end mills, but this one held out really well. In fact, it's still alive. With all the parts freshly machined, this first assembly was actually really nice. Everything fit exactly how I wanted it to. I was able to tighten up the timing belts uh, using those slots. The stepper motor is nice and tight against the spindle. I finished those two 3 8 holes just in the drill press. There's a little bit of a scar from my, my Mach 3 learning incident. But everything is really nice. I took it to the belt sander and rounded off the corners just to protect my future fingers. I did give it a light sandblasting and, well, I had some gray paint, so I painted it gray. The last part of getting it running was wiring in the power supply and the driver. I fucking hate wiring! One of the things about doing your own CNC conversions, though, is that, well, for better or worse, you get a lot of experience in setting these kinds of things up. So when you try a project like this, it may just work on the first try. And that's pretty cool. Thank you. 
I need to figure out some exact settings in Mach 3 for things like acceleration and overall speed of this axis. But I believe the setup allows me for quite a bit of versatility in the future. There was definitely some math uh, in setting up the driver as well as Mach 3 as far as steps per division goes. I got it nice and accurate as you can see with this incredibly crude demonstration, uh, which was later confirmed with actual proper apparatus. Well, I'm not gonna lie, this project actually took me a lot longer than I really thought it would, for, you know, whatever various reasons. I'm really excited to get to the point where now I can start making chips with it. I need to figure out exactly what I need to do to do that, as far as rotary axis feeds and speeds, and getting the programming right in either Fusion or, you know, whatever I use. In the description of this video, I'll share links to all the parts that I used, all the, everything I bought to make this project. Uh, if they're Amazon or eBay links, they're probably my affiliate links, so if that bugs you or not, sorry. The motor cover for the NEMA 23 motor, actually, I modeled up, and I'll share the STL file for that if you want to 3D print your own. This NEMA 23 is a 60 millimeter and won't accept the normal motor covers. Anyway, I want to thank you for watching. I hope you found some entertainment in this video. Special thank you, as always, goes out to my patrons. If you'd like to join them, there's a link right there on screen. Anyway, I will see you in the next project. Thank you.